The central dogma of molecular biology dictates the flow of genetic information from DNA to RNA and then to protein. In order to create proteins from these genes, RNA copies are made in the nucleus and will be subsequently transported into the cytosol, where proteins are built based on their sequences. In other words, for protein coding genes, RNA is made from DNA during a process called transcription, and protein is made from RNA during translation. There are different methods available for detecting and quantifying gene expression. Reverse transcription PCR, or RT-PCR, amplifies DNA based on two primer sequences framing the section of interest. Since PCR amplifies DNA and not RNA, RNA is first converted back to DNA prior to amplification. This is done via a process called reverse transcription. In nature, this process is carried out by retroviruses. In northern blotting, an RNA sample is digested into fragments that are separated by size in a gel using electrophoresis. They are then transferred to a membrane that can be probed to test for the presence of a hypothesized RNA transcript. Microarrays, like northern blots, are hybridization based. But in contrast to a northern blot, a microarray yields highly detailed information about the individual genes that have been transcribed. These signals are then detected, quantified, and used to create a digital image of the array. Finally, the digital image is used to identify the transcribed genes. Protein coding genes in genomic DNA contain large stretches of non-coding sequences called introns that are spliced out of the RNA transcript by an enzymatic complex called the spliceosome before it is passed to the ribosome for translation. The parts of the gene that remain in the mature, processed mRNA transcript are called exons. These are the parts that encode the amino acid sequences and will be used in protein production. Next generation sequencing technology allows for advanced studies of gene expression because it captures a snapshot of the whole transcriptome rather than a predetermined subset of genes, which was previously possible with RT-PCR and microarray technologies. Whole transcriptome sequencing provides a comprehensive view of the cellular transcriptional profile at any given biological moment and greatly enhances the power of RNA discovery methods. To study this data, we have to run processing pipelines that turn raw reads into structured data ready for analysis. NGS technology captures DNA sequences and generates digital data using several steps. First, RNA that was extracted from cells is converted into cDNA that is then sheared and placed into a flow cell. Inside the flow cell, cDNA fragments are amplified using bridge PCR amplification and the flow cell is then inserted into the sequencer. This machine uses image analysis to capture each letter in the flow cell fragments by analyzing visual patterns and then converting them into a sequence of letters. Typically, NGS reads are between 30 and 300 base pairs long. They consist of a series of letters T, C, G, and A. Recall that a typical RNA-seq pipeline includes three main steps, preprocessing, mapping, and quantification. Pre-processing is needed to clean up our data by removing the adapters, trimming some of the reads, and removing the PCR duplicates. This is important because PCR amplification is not uniform across all reads. Then, we take the cleaned up read sequences to map them onto a reference, using a FASTA file for sequences of the genome and GTF files for annotation. Based on the quality of annotation, we can use various strategies for mapping. Once this step is complete, we have to quantify expression levels and give each expressed element a number. This process helps transform short raw reads that are in the FASTQ file into structured tables of gene or isoform expression that can be analyzed for expression patterns.